What's up, Joe 200? All right, so it is February 11th, 2024, Super Bowl Sunday. All right, so it's kind of cool. I, I think both teams are really, um, really great teams, and you know, I, I can't really decide who I'm pulling for, which is like a, actually a great place to be. All righty, so um, none of you are going to watch this today because you're all going to be watching the game together, which is all good. Okay, you know who's watching the game with me? Desi, he's a good boy. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? He's such a good boy. Sometimes the boy dog comes by and says hi, too. Juicy's a girl dog. But this time it's a boy dog. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Okay. So, um, so uh, you've got the email um, from Julia reminding you. In fact, we've been talking about this for a while. This is CT. One, okay, to turn it in document. There's your instructions right there. Um, if you go, if, you, if you're not familiar with this being due, okay, here's a, another reminder, okay. Um, so, so right here, right, it's due on Monday the 12th. Don't forget, 14th is Valentine's Day. Um, it's all kind of laid out right here. You just follow the instructions. We kind of say multiple times, you're going to look at three countries, and you're going to do two bits of data acquisition or data analysis, Okay. You can look at the U.S. of A, okay? Two different countries, all right? One country must be developing, all right? Um, lots of different ways of saying that. Developing, uh, non-westernized, okay? Uh, Non-industrialized, uh, but uh, developing is, a, is the term of art now. Here's a bunch of developing economies, okay? Yes, even China is brought into that because of the broad spectrum of their economy from from very, very, very agricultural and simple to, of course, um, totally developed in terms of uh, technology. But you can see, you know, other countries like uh, Oman and, uh, and Guyana, okay, stuff like that, all right? So, all right, so there, there's your list right there, okay? So, um, and then you choose another country, all right? So, um, there's two different ways of doing this, okay? As at, And you just follow the directions, okay? You're gonna do uh, screen captures, okay? on um, on uh, uh, the data that you get, okay? That does not go towards the uh, page limit, okay? So you do two to three pages of text and then you do the graphs on top of that, okay? Awesome, and again, this is all laid out in here, okay? You so you're gonna create graphs for the data, okay? Alrighty, um, like we said, it's gonna be US and two countries, all right? Um, you'll attach or you include the graphs, okay, from what you're going on right here, all right? Um, the graphs do not count towards the two-page length. And, you know, two pages is actually kind of small, and uh, so you can go for, further than that, all right? So um, the first thing we're looking at, um, as indicated here in the directions, is we're going to look at life expectancies, okay? And you're going to ask yourself what's going on in terms of, each of the countries and what was happening sociologically that that could um, underlie or um, would be the uh, the kind of epidemiology behind why either there was an increase in life expectancy or there was a decrease all right so you can click right here this takes you to the graph right here this takes you to the overall kind of discussion in here which is kind of cool because here's some a way to learn you can read up on all this and what's going on all right so it tells you all about that. I'm not going to read that for you, okay? Here's the actual graph that, that you'll be using, okay? So this is how it all lays out right here, okay? So they did it. They showed Africa. They showed the world, okay? And you see it's going from 1770, all right, all the way out here to 2021, all right? Um, so um, these are all regions of the world, Um and so, you know, continents, and then we're going to look right here, we're going to edit this, okay? So we don't want to see the world, we don't want to see Europe, we don't want to see the Americas, see I'm getting rid of them, I'm clicking on them, getting rid of Africa, getting rid of Oceania, okay? All righty, what I do want to do is I'm going to choose a country, all right? All right, so I'm going to choose Afghanistan, okay, as a developing country, and then I'll choose two other countries, Okay. So um, how about New Zealand, all right? That's an awesome one, okay? That is a developed country. It's just like US of A, and then I gotta find the US of A. Lots of choices here. What's cool about this is people worldwide are gathering data and uploading it into this database. And so this is real amazing, real time for you guys. There's the United States, okay? So 
Rip up here. So there's my three countries, all right? Two developed, one developing, okay? And I'm going to get my face out of the way here. And, and then all you do is you hit this X. It takes you back to your graph, and there's the three countries, all right? So um, here's Afghanistan, okay? Here's the United States, and here is New Zealand. Now, first, you, you ask yourself, you know, why do these countries, why are they don't have data back from all these years that precede. So the data was not being acquired by the countries, okay? This takes a lot of awareness, okay? Funding in terms of public health and uh, um, uh, like our Center for Disease Control. And then you start getting this kind of data, all right? So we can, you know, we can march to the United States here. Do, 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 do. What happened right here, all right? It was just like COVID, wasn't it, okay? All righty, so this was the Spanish flu. Bam. All right. Um, then we can course through here. Here's where New Zealand's on board. Okay. And um, so then we can come down here in Afghanistan. Um, obviously, the life expectancy this is a really, really difficult place to live. A lot of infectious disease, um, not a whole lot of water treatment, um, food treatments. And so people would die young. Okay. Uh, they didn't have hospitalization in hospitals and infrastructure. And then we see, right, we're coursing along here, okay? So you can see the numbers, okay? So right here, the U.S. is, is about 72, um, uh, 71, and New Zealand is starting to march ahead of us. And then look at Afghanistan. If you were born in uh, 1971, you, the, the average life expectancy was 37 years. And then we see, what do we see here? Boom, it went down. What is this? This is all of the strife and the wars that happened in Afghanistan peaking right here. Remember, it was Russia, and then it was then it was the U.S., okay? So that uh, dramatically caused a decline in life expectancy. And here it's coming back right here. But you also ask yourself, what's going on here? New Zealand and the U.S., what, what's different right there? Um, the two things that really knocked down the life expectancy in the U.S., was um, our our problem with the opioid opioid addiction and opioid deaths, and um, and then our um, politicizing of COVID and vaccinations. Okay, New Zealand was totally on board with um, social isol isolation, masking, and vaccination, and so that's what you see right there. All right, so that's what you do. So what you do, in you know, I have a, a PC. I hit the, the Windows icon, I hit the Shift, and I hit an S, okay? And there it is, okay? So I'm just going to grab that right now, like so, okay? Boom, and now I have it, okay? And then what I can do is I can just, you know, I can do one of a, a couple of things. I can do word, uh, word, a Word document, okay? Um, I can do whatever it is I, did, I want to do. So let's here, let's go over here. Yeah, I don't want to do this. I'm going to File, and I'm going to do New. Hit the Word document, okay, and I'm going to hit um, paste, and there it is. So then I'll, I'll do my text, and here's my here's my figures. All right, so that's all I need for the for that first half of the paper. All right, then you go to the second half of the paper. All right, so that was very really really cool, um, and uh, and then the second half is we're going to be looking at uh, changes in the size of young working age and elderly populations. Okay. So here is the link for this, okay? So, and this one uh, doesn't have the background reading it. It goes straight to the graphs, okay? All right, it's coming, it's loading. There it is, okay? So this shows Afghanistan. So beautiful, the same country I did before, I have it again right here, okay? And so um, it's this is a metric of the change, okay? So they start with um, the readout of, um, this is our, 100%, okay, right here at um, um, at 1950, okay? So any change then is going to show um, in, in terms of, of the number of people, all right? So let's say we start with 100 people right here, okay? And now we're up here to um, whatever it is, 187. So that's an 87% increase, okay? So this is how you're looking at it right here, and it just shows you, um, you know, while all age groups are increasing, you know, which ones are increasing the most, okay? So in Afghanistan, people don't live as long, so it's the younger people, under 15, that show the biggest increase, all right? Um, and this goes all the way, this is this is data that we're acquiring, okay? Fine, all right? Then the next one would be the projection. So we'll start from 2020 
all right so we're going to start fresh and these are the predictions of the increases of the different age groups that are going to happen from that 2020 time period all the way out here to 2100 uh, so the prediction is yes things will modernize and um and they're, they're going to see the biggest um uh change um in in their age structure in terms of the elderly people okay um and so the working age people are going to have to support that and you see that there's um there's a big difference right here all right so all right you want to change that you go right in here and we'll just go down here and we'll go down to the us okay and you hit that okay and now it says united states okay so this is our real-time data that you know, we started at 15 we looked at increases in each of the age groups all right boom all the way up here to this is true data that's been acquired all right so again we're seeing um um a, you know a big 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 increase in percentage wise in the number of people over 65 so that's where when you're working that's where the money is going to be going to caring for them and in terms of government-based social support okay and we see kind of a kind of flat line in terms of reproduction all right so fertility has gone down because you see the people that could be reproducing the green lines the working age people are doing so they're deciding to work and not have kids we can now go further and see what are the projected increases in the po in in um, each each age structure right here. Okay, we have a lot more people, of course, than Afghanistan. We're looking at, but it's the percent increase from this starting point. So this right here. So we have um, what is it in our country? I think it's uh, do, 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 do. I should know this, but I think it's about um, three hundred seventy million. Let's see, let's see what it is here. How many? in the u.s okay to do, do, do 331 million all right so we have 331 million so that would be the starting point right here obviously yeah, afghanistan has far less and then this is the percent change in each age group all right same drill windows key shift s and i'll just do this three times okay so i have because of my my cursor it included that you don't need to be doing that okay and then I would just go back over here to the document that, that we, we we created, and boom, and I put that in. All right, you um, you're going to do this right here three times. All right, and you can you can change it in the orientation and the size, however you want to do it. Okay, but you're going to have again the same three countries that you analyzed here. You're going to be analyzing here as well, but for that second part. All right. And, and then, you know, explain why this is happening, just like I did before, you know? You know, what, why, why are we seeing shifts in working age populations, fertility, things like that? What are the, what are the driving forces, okay? Awesome. That's how you do it, my friend, okay? All righty, so I'm done with that. And done with that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm wearing a hat because my hair is a mess, and that's what hats are, hats are good for, okay? And uh, we did send out an announcement of... Uh, uh, about the Lunar New Year and the Year of the Dragon. This is gonna be a great year, okay? Very prosperous year. Um, and um, kind of a, a coming out for all you guys, okay? So this is a huge year for opportunity, all right? Saw that yesterday, um, not only was it Super Bowl weekend, but but for you surfers, uh, the Pipeline Masters was yesterday. Um, and it was a big deal and the waves were pumping. And what what I it was it was it brought me to tears because this was the first year it was the coming out party like I said year of prosperity big change the women the women were on it and they, oof, women got the best waves and it was the first year usually the women were really timid out there because it's a life threatening place to do surfing and but this year they were on it so so kudos to them all right so now what are we going to do here we're going to go to our weekly assignments okay. Alrighty, so um, you know we've you know set up the reality of there's a lot of older people. We just saw um, there, that there's more uh, percentage increase in the older people compared to the working age population, and um, we then discuss some of the issues. Okay, that happens, you know, um, and that has to do with. Um, Age-related diseases, okay? These are not uh, infectious diseases, so they're not communicable, all right? Uh, diseases, so these, because an infectious disease is communicable. You communicate the disease by breathing on somebody, all right? Um, so the non-communicable diseases like cancer that Julia discussed last time, 
Um, we're going to do um, uh, diabetes and heart disease this time, and then we'll go on to um, uh, Alzheimer's disease and other age of the age of the disease of the brain next time. Okay, age is the biggest risk factor. So, so this has become a bigger and bigger burden. All right, what are what are, what is the typical kind of, kind of diseases, and what can we do to prevent? Okay, so that's what this is all about. All right, we have um, yeah, the Center for Disease Control came out with an article a while back that the projection in our country, okay, is that by um, 2050, 40% uh, of America will be um, either uh, diabetic or close to being diabetic. This is an enormous burden because we're going to see today so many diseases um, are a consequence of having diabetes, okay? And these are these diabetes-associated conditions, all right? All right, so this is the lecture that's going to go right here. This is... Um, uh, a slide deck right here, all right, and then we're gonna look at some of the some of the the numbers that are mind-boggling worldwide uh, from this really cool uh, website right here that is uh, the um, uh, uh, the International Diabetic Federation. It's a global analysis, same drill like the other uh, your your um, CT1, uh, where we were getting looking at data. These people are, are acquiring data globally all the time. This is, a, this is an older um, uh, PDF file, but it really does work. It kind of, um, it kind of lays everything out pretty simply. All righty, so we're looking right here, and we'll, we'll just go straight down, you know. So when, when we, you know, the whole issue with diabetes is um, a mishandling of the blood glucose that enters your body uh, with a meal, okay? And, um, and uh, we're going to talk about two different types of diabetes. One is uh, just an unfortunate, unlucky exposure to viruses. Uh, so, we, you know, we've talked a lot about COVID too, uh, COVID, co um, COVID and uh, long haul syndrome. And one of the consequences is, is there's been an uptick in uh, type 1 diabetics. And this is because the virus will infect uh, the pancreas that produces insulin and the immune system attacks it. And so then you become completely insulin dependent, meaning you have to um, inject yourself with insulin. All right. So that's, uh, um, for the most part, um, a juvenile onset, early onset. And then the type 2 diabetes is the one that, that, that gets you, you in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, there's a genetic predisposition for this. So if you have a family history of the type 2 diabetes, then um, then you're at risk and you have to be extra careful. The second age-related one is uh, associated with lifestyle choices. And so you have the opportunity to make the right choices to lower your risk, especially if you're the one that has that genetic predisposition, all right? So that's just a take-home message. So this is the glucose that elevates in your, in your bloodstream. So when we have a meal, okay, we digest the food inside of... Our stomach, it goes into the intestines. The intestines then are like a sponge. They absorb the nutrients and stick it into the blood. Then the blood needs to distribute the glucose to all kinds of storage facilities and for later use when you're, you know, when you're thinking and you're running and, and you're exercising. All right? so, um, so what happens is your pancreas is going to release insulin. That's the eye right here. So this would be a pancreat, pancreatic cell. Okay, And then... Um, what, what happens is, actually this would be the muscle cell responding to the insulin, sorry, or liver. And so the insulin binds to the liver or the muscle. And when it does so, it lets glucose in. It's pretty, it's called a, it's a, it's a receptor, okay? It's called an insulin receptor. And, uh, and that's the key. How sensitive are your insulin receptors? The, the, the better meals that you eat, the more sensitive your insulin receptors. So if you're eating a high fiber diet, okay, if you exercise a lot, if you lower your stress, yes, yeah, stress actually goes in there and alters the receptors, okay? So um, everything you can do uh, to improve your lifestyle improves the way you package your glucose. Because what happens when the glucose sticks out there in the blood, then it's weird, looks, start looking like um, bacteria or a virus. It candy coats proteins. The immune system flips out, and then you have inflammation in all your blood vessels. Not a good thing, right? All right, so hyperglycemia occurs when either you don't have enough insulin or you have dysfunctional receptors. So now the glucose is just accumulating, okay, inside the blood, and that's how you candy coat the proteins. Every single bit of your vasculature 
vasculature is compromised when you have this, this inflammation and abnormal sugary coating of the proteins, okay? Um, wherever the glucose goes, water follows it, okay? So what happens is the glucose goes, you, you're one of your biggest arteries coming right off your heart is the one that goes down um, through your abdomen and it forms the renal artery. And then your, your kidneys filter out all the excess blood glucose and put it into your bladder. So you have a lot of urination then, all right? So everywhere that glucose goes, the water follows in your blood. So you pee out all that extra glucose, okay? As a result, you're losing a lot of water and you become very, very thirsty, all righty? Um, because you're peeing out all the glucose, you're gonna feel fatigued. Cause you're, and you're also the other thing that happens is your receptors aren't working. It's, it's hard to even wrap your head around that. You have all this glucose but you can't get it inside the cell. You can't get it inside a brain cell. You can't get it into inside the heart muscle cells. You can't get it into the um, the, the muscles that line your skeletons, your, your skeletal muscles, okay? It won't go in, all right? So um, as a result, you feel this incredible fatigue and you're tired, all righty? Um, the inflammation, because of all the candy coating, screws up the blood vessels in your eyes, okay? It screws up the blood vessels all throughout your body so that um so now you can't get the immune system to go out there and, and go after it okay so you're and the other thing that happens is um is the high blood glucose also uh, is disruptive to the immune system so all these problems right here just seems almost counterintuitive end stage okay you'll start losing weight because you can't you can't put the glucose anywhere and um and nausea and vomiting okay Alrighty, so these are the serious long-term side effects. I have a friend who's suffering from this, and that you get what's called uh, diabetic retinopathy. It's diabetic eye disease, and you start to go blind. Kidney disease, um, diabetics oftentimes have to go on dialysis because their kidneys no longer work, or they have to get a kidney transplant, okay? Um, nerve damage, that's called neuropathy, so meaning neuron and pathology. It really happens, tends to happen out in the legs and the feet where um, the blood delivery system is furthest from the heart, okay? And and um, because of the poor blood flow out to your legs and feet, then amputation happens. Um, the major arteries to the brain and to, and to the heart are also compromised. You get what's called atherosclerosis. Yeah, the blood vessels get clogged. And next thing you know, um, you're not getting good blood supply to the heart of the brain and you have a heart attack or a stroke, all right? So like I said, type one diabetes, this is um, um, youthful or juvenile onset. This is thought to be mostly an autoimmune disease. It is an autoimmune disease, mostly from maybe a, a prior viral infection. And then the type two diabetes, this ha happens later in life. Um, you, you, you have a family history, it doesn't mean you're gonna get it. You just have to be more careful about um, your diet and exercise, okay? And what happens is, the cells don't use insulin. This is called insulin resistance because the receptors aren't working. Even though you're releasing insulin, you have the glucose, the receptors don't work, and you've got a problem. Um, the ins the uh, pancreas responds by making more and more insulin because we got to get rid of that blood glucose. It becomes this crazy snowballing, poor feedback. Eventually, the pancreas fails, and then um, even type 2 diabetics need to have insulin as well. All right? So this is changing. It's going up and up and up and up and up and up, okay? So we have in our country right now um, 14 million people that are diabetics, okay? 14 million, right? So it's pretty staggering. The projection, of course, is that it's going to go up to maybe 50 million, right? Which is even more staggering, okay, as we go higher and higher in terms of the uh, percent of the population that has it, okay? Um, this right here is the type 1, okay? So this is the juvenile onset and um, and um, and it has the same symptomology, okay? And you manage this by monitoring your blood glucose. Luckily, there is a, a skin sensor patch that just looks at um, kind of the con the the uh, conductive patterns of the skin and tells you whether or not you need to do an insulin injection. You um, still monitor your activity and your uh, um, and your your diet. Type two, okay. This is the most common one, happens over the age of 40, okay? Um, different uh, risk factors in terms of our ethnicity. Um, uh, 
very slow, slow progression in terms of the symptoms, okay? So here they are again, everything we talked about before. Um, uh, most people aren't even aware that they have it until it's too late, okay? Um, uh, we need to educate better, um, healthy eating, uh, monitor our blood glucose, okay? So this is where right now I go see my doctor once a year and I look at my blood glucose. So I can look at my um, uh, hemoglobin A1C, which is a measure of the candy coating of the proteins. And then I can also look at my fasting blood glucose. And then um, if you're in trouble, then you can do um, a glucose challenge test, okay? Uh, there's tons and tons of different medications that are out there. Exercise is the most important thing. Reducing weight is a big deal. What happens is when, you're, when you have abdominal obesity, okay, we're going to do this in terms of the discussion. We're looking at our BMI. If we look at just the visceral, so all the fat that surrounds my intestines and my heart, kidneys, and things like that, where it's not supposed to be, um, it releases a bunch of factors, the fat does, including fat that gets released from broken up um, fat cells and obese people that then causes the insulin receptors not to work. This is this insulin resistance. So we gotta control being overweight. We gotta do that by getting rid of the sedentary lifestyle. Be aware of your family history, okay? And, um, and, 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 and uh, again, your culture and, and how bad it is in terms of your community, okay? So we see that the, this is a, a disease of excess, okay? And we're gonna go over that in our discussion as well. Uh, we're looking at, at the prevalence going up and up and up and up and up and up, okay? And, um, and the problem is we have unlimited access to unlimited food and, that's, and, and, and we've become very sedentary uh, and we live high stress lives. So these are the three spokes that really, really um, are kind of, a, kind of a mess, okay? Alrighty, so this is a big burden because, you know, Blindness, kidney failure, amputations, heart attacks, okay? People survive heart attacks, strokes. People survive strokes, and you just continue to be this big um, economic burden on uh, our country, and states, our communities, and, and then you use a, you as an individual, okay? All right. Um, and they have a higher death rate, of course, okay? So this is a big burden. This is, this is way, way... Um, um, underscores what, what's really happening okay so you you know you monitor what's going on you monitor your glucose blood pressure um when you have diabetes you you get elevated blood pressure because of the development of plaques it's the candy coating the immune system losing it okay and um and then cholesterol gets elevated your your, uh, your liver starts putting out cholesterol and triglycerides it's all fatty and nasty and then that contributes to high blood pressure. Okay, so we got to control the cholesterol as well. So once this, you know, once the uh, um, uh, the horse has left the barn, you got to get on this, and you got to make sure that you're controlling all these. We go see the uh, doctors regularly, and this is a very socioeconomic thing too. Not everybody has access to doctors. Okay, prevention is key. Prevention is key. Um, this is the A1C. You want to be below at least. Seven is kind of too high. I would say the, the new number is 6.4. Um, and this is the percentage of your hemoglobin, this is in your red blood cells, that are candy-coated. Um, this is uh, another readout of high of candy-coating, okay, of your blood vessels along with inflammation and, and, um, and plaques full of cholesterol. Um, you got to keep your blood pressure low, okay? When it gets high, it actually causes more damage. The immune system goes racing in, which sadly creates more damage it kind of becomes this downward spiral okay don't smoke don't smoke don't smoke um be active healthy food choices these are all the key things reduce your stress okay all right cool so i'm going to be done with that right now guys and uh so we'll scroll down here if you're ever interested in gathering data again this is a pretty pretty cool website by the um Inter international diabetes federation right there okay and um, yeah, you can go in there, you can play around here. I'll kind of, kind of show you real quickly what it looks like when we get into it. All right, it's gonna take us to this and you come down here and you click right here. And it's just a matter of, you know, something if you, if you, if you want to get into it. This, you know, the, this is just for your edification. The quiz questions are not coming from here. But we come here and we can look at, again, um, the numbers of, of diabetics, diabetic patients in, in each 
part or region of the world, okay? And uh, we can see how we all stack up. A lot of it shows because there's a greater population, so they're going to have greater numbers of diabetes. If you want to scroll down and find out more about um, the numbers, again, these are these are the, the, the crazy numbers in here. And low socioeconomic, they don't have, uh, you know, the... the the um, care to control for this. And you can look at your individual region, and that's what this is right here. So we can look at the North, North American region. Here's the actual numbers right here, okay? So close to a million deaths every single year from diabetes um, because of the trajectories. And, uh, or we can go into a more populated region like Africa, and uh, we can see right here that um, they have that many people that are living with it. So it, it, it's kind of a fun interactive, what I'm saying, all right? Okay, let's go back here. All right, cool, 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 cool. And again, these are, these are uh, um, images that I got by going into that website right there. And you go to the US right here, all right? So what happens is diabetes causes problems in all the blood vessels, especially the big blood vessels. And so what happens is the biggest blood vessels, once your heart pumps, there's a big loop called the aorta, and it puts out these giant coronary arteries that goes to your heart, because your heart's never stopped. It's going, gung, 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 gung. Needs oxygen, needs glucose every single second, okay? Um, and if um, the blood vessels go into the heart, um, become candy coated, become atherosclerotic, then it's not going to get the oxygen, it's not going to get the fuel for it to operate, and then the heart muscle begins to die off, and that's heart disease. Same thing happens up here in the brain. You can have little miniature strokes called transient ischemic attacks, and then big strokes as well. We see over here, everywhere there's a blood vessel, diabetes affects that. So heart attack is a risk, stroke is a risk, um, this is consequence, you know, a secondary to the high blood pressure that happens when you, you know, if you've ever had, seen honey-baked hams, that's what your arteries look like, okay? High cholesterol makes it even worse, okay? Um, and obesity sets the wheels in motion. Like I said, fat releases substances so that your insulin receptors don't work, all right? Um, Lack of activity, okay, you can reverse this. When you exercise, you increase the sensitivity of your insulin receptors, okay? Um, so, you know, what can you do? Okay. All right. Keep your A1C low, keep your blood pressure low by exercising Mediterranean diet fast every once in a while. Okay. Don't smoke. If you need to you, it's okay to take medic medication guys. You can always peel it back once you reduce your weight and increase your lifestyle, positive lifestyle moves. Okay. Lots and lots of veggies and fruit exercise. All right. That's what it, that's, what it all comes down to and it comes down to how it influences the dynamic between insulin and insulin receptor uh, we've all heard about ozempic okay there's a lot of different types of diabetes medications what ozempic does is when you have a meal and like i said your intestines are like a sponge and they take up the glucose stick it into your blood uh, normally um, then uh, your your intestines also release this little molecule um, that looks just like Ozambic, and it goes to the pancreas, and it'll, it'll triple the amount of insulin that you release. All right, that's good. All this glucose comes in. Let's pump out the insulin. Let's package it away for later in our liver and our muscle cells so that when we're, you know, when we're doing something, we can then tap into that, that resource. So that's Ozambic is uh, for people where that's not working so well. And so it, it is an uh, artificial way of injecting this natural peptide that your intestines release to, you know, quadruple or five times increase the amount of um, insulin that's released by the pancreas. It also, the same hormone that you release when you're having a meal from your intestines goes up to your brain and says, hey, there's a bunch of food down here. You can slow your roll. And that's why Ozempic helps people lose weight, all right? So um, almost to the point that half of, uh, half of Americans will become diabetics in their, li in their lifetime. Um, blindness is a big, big thing that's associated with this. Here's a couple of videos that you can watch. Um, I really love this one because, uh, again, John, just like me, okay, looks like a, a, you know, a guy that doesn't have the problems, any problem, can't read a book by its cover, judge a book by its cover. And these are all the complications that happen if everywhere there's a blood vessel is impacted by the diabetes, okay? So you can go blind, 
you can have uh, stroke. Did you know that we're going to go into Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease, uh, type 2 diabetes, like I said, is age-related. They're calling Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes just to keep the, that thought pattern going because it all comes down to the blood vessels uh, being inflamed because of being a diabetic. 80% of Alzheimer's patients have diabetes, okay? You can have peripheral artery disease that causes, first of all, you, can, you can't walk, and then amputations uh, that are associated with the um, uh, neuropathy and the poor blood flow to the, uh, to the um, extremities. Like I said, you'll have kidney failure. These are all you know, motivating factors. And you can see why economically what's a, such a big deal. All righty, cool. So how did we get here? So this is just a basics about the evolution of mankind. You got to remember that we, um, you know, we've been on the earth for millions of years. Let's see how long we've been on here. So, all right, get out of here. How long? And been on earth. Hey, somebody's asked that question before. All right. All right. Uh, seven million years. It's only the last 200 that we've had unlimited access to unlimited food. All right. So we're looking at seven million years of evolution that says, tells us, hey, look at all that food. I better eat it all because I don't know when my next meal is coming. Because, yes, that's what we do. We store it up and as fat. We store it up in our livers, and then what happens is you might have go another uh, another good three, four, five days, you know, walking the hills of Laguna Niguel looking for something to eat. Okay, that's the way we're designed. Now we just go to Ralph's, we go to Trader Joe's, and we're supposed to psychologically say, "Hey, I've had enough." It's totally against our biology. Okay, and that's what gets us into trouble. Okay, so we it has to be a choice thing. Okay, all right. So that's what that video is all about. Um, the way insurance companies um, address this, okay, um, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a uh, cost versus uh, benefit analysis. Are you going to be a risky client? Are you going to cost them a lot of money? And they've relied forever on your body mass index, which is really, really not fair. Okay, so this is a, a photo of our very own LeBron James for the Los Angeles Lakers, and we hear. Super Bowl Sunday, Patrick Mahomes, okay? These guys um, have, um, from the level of exercise that they have done, their bones get bigger, their muscles get bigger, okay? And so as a result, they're going to weigh more, okay, for their height, right? That's what the body mass index is all about. So um, their insurance company, companies using that is really, really, really not fair, Okay. So this is a really cool article right here that talks about it's time to retire the body mass index, okay, and start to use more accurate methods. And one of the simplest ways is you just take uh, a measurement of your hips and then a measurement of the, the diameter of your waist, and it's that hip to waist ratio. That's a better readout, okay? There's also another way of pulling the skin and measuring the thickness of the fat. That's a better readout, okay? So... But to this day, we still use BMI, all right? So you go over here, right here, click on this guy right here, all right? Takes you to the BMI, all right? You calculate your BMI right here, all right? Just explains the BMI, okay? What it's all about, all right? Um, so you could be like me, six, zero, one, six, six, all right? And... And so my BMI, right, so you can see right here, is 22.5, all right? And it, here's the readout of that information. And it shows you I'm right in here in this wealthy category. Fine, all right, fine, fine. All right, cool. So then you go back and you look here and you see that, whoa, 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 we got we to see it, it changes, okay? There's not one, and it's, this is from, from doing public health studies. We do the epidemiology, and we see that, we can at, uh, look at these ethnic groups right here, white, Hispanic, and black, okay? And look at their BMI, as we see right here, okay? Remember, I was right around 22, okay? Um, and depending on um, your ethnicity, this is your risk for hypertension. So Hispanics and blacks can have a higher BMI until they get to that risk 
for hypertension, okay? That's how you read this, risk for diabetes, okay? On and on and on, all right? Awesome, okay. And again, this is, again, looking at um, uh, um, the um, uh, BC classification according to the World Health Organization and looking at the Asian Pacific guidelines. It, it changes, it varies. So, so we are not all just one uniform population. So much of the data was really calculated by uh, looking at just you know, uh, uh, white male volunteers, which is which is sad. Um, so then we can you know uh, use other calculators. Okay. So I want you to talk about your BMI. Also, I want you to go in here. I want you guys to figure out um, how long you're going to live. Okay. Um, there's a couple calculators here that are provided by the uh, Social Security Administration that are kind of fun. Um, I really think this one's down here because it is really cool by an insurance company. So they're weighing you know things about life insurance. Okay. And uh, they ask a lot of lifestyle and, and family history questions. So, like I said, I'm I'm going to be 68 in a while. I'm a male, right? So we go like that, and we just keep marching along here. Okay. I remember, I was six, six, zero, one, six, six. All right. So there, that's the BMI. They're using it, my friends. Like I said, okay. Um, uh, I had my dad had some cardiovascular disease, but that was about it. Okay. Um, he lived to 87. All right. All right. Uh, uh, I check my blood pressure regularly. So that shows you that I see a doctor and I'm on it. Um, I use stress effectively. Okay. I like to exercise is a good form of stress. Surfing is a good form of stress. Okay. Um, I do daily exercise. Okay. All right. My eating habits, I eat, you know, on a weekly basis. That's what this is talking about. Uh, portions of five portions of fruits and veggies. I eat fruits and veggies every single day. Okay, All right. Uh, yes, I always wear my seatbelt. That's going to determine my life expectancy. Okay, especially here in California where it's a law. Okay, I've never been in an accident. Okay, awesome. Um, uh, how much do I drink? Okay, uh, I would say three to four drinks more than two times a week. Drink more than I said. I never drink more than two drinks a day. That's where I'm at right there. Okay, awesome. Um, I never smoked. Awesome. These are all my risk factors. I do not use recreational drugs. Okay. Um, I see my doctor routinely. See my dentist every year. I've never not had dental insurance. Okay. And da 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 da. How long am I going to live? Oh, holy moly! All right. So kind of cool. I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't know if my kids are ready for that. 101? Okay, cool. All right, guys. Um, so you go ahead and play with those. Do your do your projections, your predictions. Uh, I can't wait to see it. It'll be really, really, really cool. All righty. Now, what am I going to do here? Uh, uh -uh. And what I'm trying to do is find... My taskbar. There it is. Okay. I found my taskbar. God. Okay, guys. Peace. Go Chiefs. Go Niners.